I want to teach about the grace of hospitality. Let us read from the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. The Bible is saying, Then the word of God came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Before you were born, created in the womb of your mother, the Almighty God knew you. Before you came to this world, He had already ordained you, set you apart, consecrated you as a prophet to the nations. That's what the Bible is saying. It means your value, your destiny, your worth as an individual is not a product of human tradition. It's not a product of people sitting down together deciding who you shall be. But the Lord already ordained you. He already predestined you. He consecrated you and set you apart. It means you can only say I have succeeded in this life if whatever the Lord already ordained upon your life before you are born comes to pass. When you have been able to realize the potential that the Lord had deposited upon you even before you were born, you can now say I have lived a successful life. It means success is only a product of you accomplishing God's design for your life, God's purpose for your life. There is a purpose of God for you which is not a result of human minds, human tradition, or people deciding. Your potential, your purpose, your destiny is a result of God's divine arrangement. If you are destined to be successful, that success is because God created you a successful person. So before I go further, I just want to declare upon your life that as you survive this world, as you survive these moments, as you live in this earth, may whatever the Lord purpose for your life come true in the name of Jesus Christ. May whatever God purpose for your life come true in the name of Jesus. Before you were formed in the womb of your mother, before you were born in this world, God already knew who you are and who you shall become in this world. And as we are surviving in this earth, our purpose should be, Lord, help me, give me the grace to achieve whatever purpose you put upon my life. May the devil not distract me from my purpose. May the enemies of my soul never achieve to take me away from my destiny. In the name of Jesus. What does this mean? It means there is value in you. There is power in you. There is potential in you. You are a very important person. To an extent that this world cannot become a better place without your involvement. You are here to participate in the building of a better life in this world. You are here to participate in life. You are not here to pass by. You are not here just to spend life and go. You are here to participate in the affairs of this world. You are here to make an impact. The Bible says you are the short of the world. You are the light of this world. You can only leave this world after you have expressed your potential, after you have touched the world. That's the purpose of your life. But the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, from verse 9 to 10. The Bible is saying, two are better than one. Because together, they can succeed. When one falls, the other lifts him up. But woe to him that is moving in this journey of life alone. Because you have no one to help when they fall down. It means uh, although your potential, your value is already predestined by the Lord, although whatever you are supposed to be is a product of divine arrangement, 
for it to manifest in this world, for it to succeed in this world, you need another person. So that that person can become your helper in the journey of success. It is a principle of life that you cannot succeed alone. Where you are weak, someone is strong. Where you are strong, someone needs your strength. It means we survive in this world by becoming helpers to one another. By becoming anchors. By becoming lifters of humankind. When you meet a person every day, there are two things you must always ask yourself. What is it that I have that is missing in their life? And what is it that they have that is missing in my life? To an extent that God has now allowed me to meet this person. What is it that I have to do in their life? What is it that they have to do in my life? The reason for which God has allowed us to meet. It means whosoever you meet in life is carrying something you don't have and you are carrying something they don't have. Everyone you meet in life is a possessor of the value that is lacking in you and you are possessing value that is missing in them. And this is why God allows you to be born in a particular family, to be found in a particular location, in a particular country, and to meet certain kind of people. So the people you meet, the people you greet every day, you don't meet them by mistake. You don't meet them by coincidence. You meet them so that they can be an exchange of value. You meet them so that they can be an exchange of power, an exchange of abilities. It means as a believer, as a child of the Lord, you cannot take people for granted because everyone that God allows you to meet in life carries that which you are lacking. Everyone that you meet in life is carrying something that you need in order to be complete as you try to achieve your destiny in this world. This is why wherever you go, you must carry the spirit of hospitality. Wherever you are found, you must carry the spirit of hospitality. Because when you carry the spirit of hospitality, that spirit of hospitality creates a platform for the release of value towards one another. You can only receive that which you can accommodate. You can only receive that which you have got capacity to carry. So the spirit of hospitality is what proves to the next person that you are ready for their value. You appreciate what they are carrying. You cherish their importance and you are ready to benefit from their life. But most of us, we pray very much, but we lack this spirit of hospitality. As a result, it seems like God is not answering our prayers. But the true fact is that the more we pray, the more we are busy pushing away those that are carrying the answer to our prayers. The spirit of hospitality is what makes God intervene in your life. The spirit of hospitality is what creates room for God to send his blessing upon our lives. The Bible says, 
If they welcome you, they welcome me. And they also welcome the one that sent me. It means God moves about in our lives through other people. His miracles, his power to change, his testimonies move in our lives through other people. To an extent that when we deny other people, we are also denying God's ability over our lives. When we welcome other people, we are opening a door for God to touch us and change our lives. He told the disciples to say, wherever you go and they welcome you, there leave your peace. But where they don't welcome you, dust off your feet and go. Go to the next house. Wherever you go and they welcome you, leave your miracles there. Leave your knowledge there. Leave your wisdom there. Leave your power there. Let their, your power change them because they have welcomed you. A lot of us are prayer warriors, but we lack hospitality. And as a result, we remain the same, although we pray so much. We remain the same, although we fast so much. In the book of Mark chapter 6, the Bible says when Jesus wanted to heal his own people in his own town, they said, is this not the brother of James and Joseph? Is this not the son of the carpenter? Is this not the boy we know? Where did he get this power to perform miracles? Where did he get this level of wisdom? They ran away from a healer and he failed to heal them, not because he was not able to heal, but they lacked a spirit of hospitality. They could not accommodate Jesus. They could not give him a platform through which his value could be released towards them. So the Bible says he failed to heal his own people, not because they did not know how to pray, but because they did not accommodate him. They were not hospitable. They did not have the spirit and the grace of hospitality. Jesus walked in their midst, but touched none of them. Jesus walked in their midst, but changed none of them because they lacked hospitality. It means when we lack the spirit of hospitality, we can also block the power of God to change us. When we lack the spirit of hospitality, we can frustrate the agenda of Jesus in our lives. Whatever the Lord Jesus fails to do in our lives is because we have failed to harness hospitality. When we say someone has got faith, we simply mean someone has got room in their heart for Jesus. When we say someone has got faith, we simply mean this person has got the spirit of hospitality that can accommodate power and value that comes from the one that is superior. You cannot receive from the person you are not hospitable towards. You cannot receive from the one you have not welcomed. You cannot receive and benefit from the one that you have not cherished. For God to benefit you, for God to change you, you must have a heart that is hospitable towards God. A heart that can accommodate his word, keep it in, inside, and allow that word to influence even your conduct. When you fail to open up your heart, when you fail to exercise hospitality, you are blocking everyone, including God, that has got power to change your life. So most of us, we pray a lot, but we move away, we move away from our blessings because we lack hospitality. Most of us, we pray so much, we fast very well, but our attitude, the way we carry ourselves around, is what frustrates the miracle in our life. For so long, 
we have been blaming the devil. Yes, he's the author of everything that is wrong. But we need to be wise enough to realize that sometimes it's not a spiritual attack that frustrates your miracle. It is your lack of hospitality. Your failure to welcome people that can change you. Tell your neighbor, what's your name? Where do you come from? What do you do in life? What is in you, my neighbor, which is not in me? The reason for which God has allowed you to sit close to me today. You discover later on that the person you are sitting close to might be an angel of the Lord in human form. The Bible in the book of Hebrews says they entertained angels without knowledge. Because these angels came in human form. Ask Father Abraham. He was visited by God who was walking on foot through the three people. When he allowed them to come in his life, they did not go without living value. They impacted him. They changed him. Because God moves in our lives through people. A lot of us are expecting to see angels one day with four wings at the back. And yet every day, God is introducing us to angels we are despising. Ask your neighbor, what is your attitude in life? I wonder some people who come to church and sit at the far corner where there is no one. They just sit there at the corner. You go into a bus, you go into a bank, you stand on the line, you don't even say, let me greet the person standing in front of me. And yet you are praying for breakthrough. And yet you are saying, God, remember me, change my life. And yet you have got a negative attitude toward people. You don't have a spirit that is likable. Wherever you go, people don't want to get closer to you. And that's the reason why you are still what you are today. Not that God doesn't want to answer your prayers, but you don't have hospitality. Hospitality creates a platform for the release of value from the next person. Lack of it blocks the same. Book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17. The Bible is saying, now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there and eat some food. Listen very well. Let's go ahead. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. A table, a chair, and a lampstand. So it will be, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunanite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I do among my own people. So he said, what then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And he said, no, my Lord. Man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived and bore a son 
when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. The Bible is saying, Prophet Elisha was passing by this house every day. And then the woman of the house said, let me offer him some food. So he said, man of God, as he was passing by, here's some food, can you eat as you go? The man of God ate. And then it became her culture. Every day, the man of God could eat in her house when he was passing by to preach. But then something struck in her mind to say, ah, I hear this man is a holy man of God. But I've not benefited from his holiness. I interact with him every day. Then he said to the husband, Sweetheart, this man is a holy man of God. And he passes by our house every day. And he eats food in this house. But we have not benefited anything holy from him. Let us create a room in our house. Put a bed there. Put a desk there. And a lampstand. So that when he comes in, he can rest. And they did that. Understand very well. Let us put a bed. Let us put a desk. And a lampstand. Why would he say, let us also have a desk and a lampstand? Was the bed not enough? But they realize this man is a holy man of God who is busy preaching. He may want to prepare his sermons as he rests in our house. So let us create a table and some light for him. That, it means at that level now, they were welcoming him as a man of God. They were concerned with the nourishment of his holiness. When he comes in our house, let him be comfortable to do that which is holy, to meditate on the word of the Father. If we just give him food and he sleeps, we are not contributing to his greater value. We are not accommodating the prophetic in him. We are not welcoming that which can change us. Yes, we may welcome him bodily by giving him food and a place to sleep. But let us go ahead and also welcome the man of God that he is. He will need to read the scripture, study the word before he goes out to preach. Let us welcome that as well. And the Bible says, they allowed him in. He would live in the house. And one day now, as a prophet, he said to Gehaz, the famous Gehaz, can you ask this woman, what can I do for her? What can I do for this woman? She has been so good to us. What can I do for her? And they called the woman and he asked, what can I do for you? Do you want me to speak a word of favor on your behalf in the presence of the king? Because as a man, I have access to the king. Do you want me to speak something that can make the king favor you? Or do you want me to speak a word of favor when I meet the commander? Because as a man, as Mr. Elisha, I have access to the commander of this nation. Then the woman said, no, I have got no problem with that. I'm a woman, I'm a citizen, bona fide of this country. I live among my people, I'm not a foreigner. So I've got no citizenship issues or conflicts, I have no visa problems, I have no passport problems, so that you should go to the, man, to, to the commander or the king of our city so that I can be favored. I don't need that. I'm a free person. You see, this was Mr. Elijah. So, as a man, what can I do to you? You see, when you meet a prophet, there are things that as men they can do towards you. But there are things that as prophets they should also be doing to you. If you mix the two, you are done. Then the Bible says, he said, what can we do for you now? 
You are saying as a man, there's nothing I can do. Then she went out and Gehazi followed her. She whispered to Gehazi, I don't have a child. I have gone everywhere. They have not helped me. I have know this man is a holy man. I believe he can do something. Let's go. When Gehazi came, he said, man of God, there is something which you as a man cannot do, but as a prophet you can do. This woman is barren. She needs a child. And her husband is very old. Then Elijah said, now let me reward you as a prophet. <laughs> Not as Mr. Elijah. Let me give you now my prophetic reward which Mr. Elijah cannot give you. By this time next year, you shall carry your own son. The woman said, ah, sir, don't lie to me. He said, I'm not speaking as Mr. Elijah. This doesn't require appointments with the king or the commander of this city. I am now speaking in my office as a prophet. I'm now giving you a reward of my a prophet. You welcomed me. You gave me a desk. You gave me light so that I could read the word of my father. And this is in return to you now. By next year, you shall hold your own son. The Bible says the woman tried to say, how is it going to be? She said, just hold your peace. Next year, shall and the Bible says it happened exactly as Prophet Elijah had spoken. Not Mr. Elijah, but Prophet Elijah. Now, as I conclude, I want to speak a word. Not as Gondwe, but Prophet Gondwe. And I want by next year at the same time. Something must happen yeah. that comes from the prophet. Yeah. <laughs> Am I speaking to you? Yeah. Because let me tell you, what you need is the reward of prophet Gondwe, not Mr. Gondwe. Yeah. Mr. Gondwe cannot do anything. If you talk about connections, he doesn't even have connections. If you talk about jobs, he doesn't even have jobs. But there is someone I'm serving who has everything that you need. There is a God that we are worshipping that has got everything that you are looking for. And they'll be speaking in the office that God gave me. What am I trying to say? If I'm a lawyer, and you meet me at the hospital, there's nothing legal that I will do about your issues. I will tell you, come to my legal office. If you're a teacher and I meet you at church, there's nothing you can do to make me wise. I should go to your classroom. If you're a prophet, you can only be in your office for you to release that which is prophetic. But for all this to happen, hospitality, following principles. Am I speaking to you? Following what? Principles. Imagine the woman that, the girl that said, sir, I was moping in your church and she came to me and said, prophet, I'm the girl that cleans your church. And I said to her, with this you're cleaning, my God will surprise you. And she received for two years a salary that graduates are failing to receive because of cleaning in the house of a prophet. Oh. What am I trying to say? When you go to the office of that man, that woman, after you have chatted, before you leave their office, tell them, I want your office to benefit me. Do something which people benefit from your office. I'm your friend, yes, but don't regard me as your friend anymore. Make decisions that can favor me in your office. It means you have respected them. 
but you go in the, the same office where others are receiving contracts. You go there, you just chat and go. May God open your eyes. May God open your eyes. For more teachings, prophecy, word of wisdom, and demonstration of God's power, visit Prophet P. Gondwe at the Healing Fountain in Lilongwe, Malawi. Contact us on WhatsApp, plus 265-999-810-981 or plus 265-998-327-637 or send an email to visit.ppgministries at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook at Prophet P. Gondwe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Prophet P. Gondwe Ministries on TikTok and X at Prophet P. Gondwe Ministries and on Instagram and threads at Prophet P. Gondwe Official. Visit our website www.prophetpgondweministries.org. Let there be light.